Welcome to Artscape. I'm Susan Sablon Harrington, your host. What if we knew somebody who was incredibly talented with a camera? And what if he had the opportunity to travel all over the world to photograph things? And what if he also had the opportunity to meet wonderfully famous people? And then one more what if, when they say what ifs don't count, what if we had him right here in our studio today? Today on Artscape, we've got the very talented, incredible Fred Watkins, who is a photographer, and you're also a heck of a nice guy. Well, thank you. Thank you thank for you. being with us today. It's a pleasure. I am so excited to have you in the studio, especially setting up, being able to see a lot of the things that you do that I didn't know that you did. Um, tell me about your photography that, let's, let's start, because you do famous people. I want to start right in on a very famous shot and a very famous person. Tell me about this shot here. Um, that's um, Debbie Allen, and um, that's her daughter. She, goes to, she was going to Sidwell, France mm -hmm. um, in D.C. And uh, we were doing a story for Ebony Magazine on uh, mothers and daughters. And I was in the studio, and I was photographing her, and I, I asked Debbie, to, I said, Debbie, Debbie? Why, don't you, Debbie, why don't you lay down? And I've photographed her several times, and I have actually do some personal work for her. And um, when she's in town, I'll, sometimes she'll call and I'll do whatever. And I said, well, you lay down, and I want you to look up. And I had her daughter jump, and I snapped that picture. That is poetic. Thank you. How many shots did you have to take? I say we did it but maybe around six times and I didn't want her daughter, it was quite a jump so I didn't want to overdo it so we did it six times and I was able to get it like on the second take. And actually. only six times? Yeah, yeah. But um, I would do it about 600 times ladies and gentlemen and still not get anything like this. You've got the eye. Well I was fortunate to get a good shot. She really loves it and actually her book um, I have the portrait of her the cover back cover of her um, ballet book um, of her daughter as well. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that I want to see and I want to bring us from now and then I want to take us way back in the second part of the show because ladies and gentlemen, you won't believe how this guy started and where he's come and all in a short period of time because you're a very young fellow. So. Oh, thank you, so. thank you. Now, tell me about this picture right here behind me because you photograph famous people <coughs> and famous events. Well, that was uh, um, a movie that was shot in Savannah, Georgia. I wrote a proposal to, I was working in a Time Life photo lab in New York, and I wrote a proposal to the life editor, Jim Angle was his name, and I proposed uh, to do an essay on Gordon Parks as a director at 70 years old. And Avery Brooks is in that picture, right? And Actually, I named my son after him. You did. Avery. And um, I went to Savannah, Georgia. Well, life said, well, Fred, we love your stuff, but you're going to have to. Um, we, I showed them all my portfolio. And they said, well, what we're going to do is um, after several meetings, we're going to allow you to do the picture, uh, the, the essay on Gordon, but you have to pay for your transportation, you have to pay for your hotel, you're going to have to pay for your meals. And I said, wow, well, what is it? You know, uh, how am I, uh, they said, well, what we'll do, you come back with a great masterpiece, or if you come back with some good photos, will think of you in the near future. So I had to pay for transportation and they said, well, we'll let you, you could pay, we'll pay for all the film, all the developing and any equipment you need. So I, I took the chance and I went there and um, came back with a masterpiece and the picture did, 
was originally for for the big screen, but mm -hmm. it turned out to be for PBS, so the story got killed. Oh wow! But well, how did you feel? I mean, being you know you're talented, you and and you've been places and you did things. How did that feel to you then, being the photographer, getting that type of an offer? Well, Life Magazine was you know for them to to even consider me it was an honor and. Mm -hmm. um, I loaded up my Volkswagen and drove to Savannah. And How old were you? I was a, in my early 20s. Okay. And, um, excuse me, late 20s. And I just took the chance of doing it. And um, when, and it was what we call back then an SS assignment. You shoot and ship. So every day I would send 30, 20 rolls of film to the life lab and they were edited and and the editor said well we will get back to you and tell you what to work on what not to work on and after a couple of days I never heard anything and so I called up I said are you getting my film and he said yes I said well I haven't heard from you he said Fred you're right on target oh my goodness so then I how did that feel that felt real good it felt real good, and um, so I end up um, coming back with, I mean, I got a lot of praise from the editors. They called me in into the editorial room with all the various different editors around, and they said, Fred, you did a superb job, but however, we can't run that story because it's going to be for PBS and we wanted it for the big screen. But um, I'll tell you what, if you could land Farrakhan for us, we will pay for all expenses and we will make up f for this shoot you did in Savannah. Oh my goodness, and I'm gonna pause so that people will have to wonder, don't tell me if you landed him, but were you thinking about doing it? Well, I. We'll tell you when we come right back, I, I guess. love the way you could do that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with me, I have the most wonderful Fred Watkins, who is a photographer extraordinaire, world-renowned, and he's right here in our studio, and we'll be back with us after this break. Can you tell? Can you tell? Does it look like I'm fighting a disease? Fighting. Fighting. Fighting for my life. Like my life expectancy is shorter than yours? There's no outward sign. But we're battling every day. Every day. Every day. Worrying. Testing. Treating. Fighting. Fighting. Diabetes. Diabetes has been called a silent epidemic. It's time to call it out for what it is. This is Brett Michaels. Join us. Choose to share, act, learn, and give. Help us stop diabetes. Hello, I'm Tom Selleck. Each of the more than 58,000 names inscribed on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. represents a story of courage, honor, and loyalty. They remind us of Americans who have sacrificed through the generations. Join me in a new campaign to build an education center in Washington to ensure that the values of those who sacrificed are never forgotten. Thank you. Okay, guys, ready? Here we go! Let's smile and brush our teeth twice a day, every day. Let's smile and floss our teeth once a day, every day. Let's keep that smile a happy place on your face with good nutrition and dental visits. Let's smile, let's smile, let's smile, let's smile! <laughs> Welcome back to Artscape. I'm Susan Sablon Harrington, your host. And if you saw the first part of the show, you'll know we had the incredible Fred Watkins, who is a photographer who's been all over the world and met zillions of different people. But how does a person like that begin? Fred, thank you once again for being with us. Now, thank you. I want you to take me back. Your little bitty baby, the apple of your mommy's eye, right? And how early was it that you realized, or that somebody realized you had some type of artistic talent? Well, um, 
it was actually my father who was a photographer, freelance photographer, and he brought me in um, the makeshift dark room in our uh, apartment that we had, and and he made. He made the bathroom into a makeshift dark room. Really? With the red light? With the red lights, the developer, the stop bath, the fixer. And, and Mom run. liked that? Yeah, I was watching him doing it, and yeah. I, I thought it was um, fascinating. And, uh, and he never pushed me, and I said, Dad, when are you going to go out shooting again? I want to see it from start to finish. And he brought me on one of, um, he was doing a portrait, setting up lights, and I was sitting back watching them. Now, what year f time frame are we talking about? I'm saying I was in um, sixth grade, Okay. about sixth grade, uh, and um, I started watching them doing it, and we went through sixth, seventh grade, and eighth grade, he bought me a camera, my first <gasps> Nikon camera. Did he? And. Um, and in junior high school, I had an art teacher that was a photographer lover too, and and I was telling him how much I was into it, and he said, "Well, let's start a club," and we started a photography club. Where was that? In in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and um, I grew up in Greenwich, Connecticut, and um, we started an art class in junior high school. Mm -hmm. And I never looked back since then. You knew. You I knew. knew. Now, yeah. did you ever worry that you wouldn't be able to put food on the table? You know, did, did you have those hungry artist photography times? I, I, I had many times like that where I, it was either, you can't tell by looking at me now, <laughs> but it was either a roll of film or a roll of a um, of Big Mac. Uh, and and um, I always would take that roll of film back mm -hmm. there. And when in my heydays in working in New York, um, I was a paparazzi, and there was times where I could either buy film or or take a taxi from downtown back to catch a commuter train. So you were a struggling artist. I was struggling. Did you know much. Cynthia at that point, your wife? N um, no, I didn't. No, okay, because mm. I was going to say then, what would you do in a situation? But you, you weren't there yet. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned paparazzi then. You, you knew you were going to be a photographer. Yes. Inside, you had to have known that you had the talent and that you were going to be great. So how does one become paparazzi? Do you just start hanging out in a club? or? <laughs> well, what I used to do was get the AP schedule. It had a nice nice schedule. Press? Associated Press okay. schedule. It has a day schedule and a night schedule. It, you always turn the TV on and you can see the celebrities at a premiere. Or, and I was wondering, how do they know they're going to be there? You know, like, and there's a AP schedule will tell you a day events and the night events. Mm -hmm. So I worked in the Time Life Photo Lab, nine to five, and then I would get, during lunch, I would go to the Time Bureau and ask to see the schedule of night events. So I would get on the phone and say, oh, I would like to come to this event. And they said, well, who are you shooting for? I said, well, I'm shooting for myself. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you. And they would hang up. Oh my. So I would stand outside the restaurant or the hotel, when the big limousine pull up, I would stand on the sidewalk and make a picture. So were some of these pictures then in the, those situations? Now this, uh, this is incredible. That picture is Christy Brinkley, and that's when we were shooting black and white. In the good old at days? At Studio 54. Mm -hmm. And um, what I end up doing, I had a pattern when, when I would take a picture something like that, I would give the owner a complimentary photo oh of it. And so they allowed me into the place. And Studio 54, I have some pictures, Susan, that I don't even think um, I would like to even show you here because some of them were wild and some of them weren't. But I had the respect of the owner because when they say no pictures, 
I will put my camera down. But um, the, this is another Studio 54, Count Basie. Oh my uh, gosh. Um, and um, he will allow me to um, go in the green room. I would take a few pictures. And once again, I would get the person's name of the publicist. And um, you have to turn that. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I would get the picture of the publicist and, and make sure they get a copy. Working in the Time Life Photo Lab, I could print free. Oh. So I would make sure that I would give these individuals, and that was Michael Jackson at um, an event as well. Um, I, I would sometimes would send pictures, and um, he, in this case, um, sent um, um, somebody to come and get it. Um, he, Michael was really particular on I've, I have a lot of pictures, and if you look on my website, um, you can see some others of Michael Jackson as well. And we'll this, put that website at the end of the show too, ladies and gentlemen, so you can see. And this is um, Cox, um, Mayor Cox, and I will always be friendly and try to, try to woo the pictures. That, can I get a picture? I always ask, I would never just bring my camera and, and shoot it like some of these um, photographers do do it now. Thank God I don't have to be a paparazzi. And this is Ella Fitzgerald. This is the old days. And after these shoots, sometimes I will run, run these pictures back to People Magazine and um, try to get it in Star Trek. And that was a section in People Magazine, which still exists today, where it would tell who, what, when, where. And, and eventually, um, after trying years of doing it, and they would say, oh, Fred, thank you, but we have somebody who already done it, so we're not, we're not interested in it. But keep us in mind, they, they always said, well, keep us in mind next time. So there was always that next time, but after a year of doing it, my it was frustrating, and um, and sometimes I lost my enthusiasm on even trying to bring it to um, People magazines. And my mentor is Gordon Parks, and I was working with him on uh, on various different projects. And Gordon said, "Well, Fred." don't put your eggs in one basket. He said, there's other avenues out there. You know, you, know, you could go to the Post, the Daily News, the uh, blah, 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 blah. And so that's what I end up doing and, and, and started getting published there. And then, lo and behold, I get a phone call. It was John, um, it was Helen Hillbrandt. I never forget it, called me and said, Fred, we haven't seen you in the, uh, I saw your picture in the uh, post. Oh, thank you. Um, we were wondering, last night, John McEnroe was with Tatum O'Neill. Did you, were you happen to be at that event? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I have it right here. Oh, my goodness. And she said, well, can you bring it up and so we could see, see, take a look at it? And I ran it up t to people, put it on their desk, and, um, half hour later she said Fred we're featuring your picture in the magazine oh my gosh I hold on at that for a sec I, I'm so excited because you just have the names and the opportunities that nobody gets a chance to do we'll be right back with more of Artscape after this I'm Susan Sablon Harrington and with me I have Fred Watkins we'll be back after this I've changed apartments several times. My roommates have always been trouble. Now, because of the economy, I've had to move back home. When my mom gets drunk, she tells me everything I do is going to fail. I get into arguments with her about her drinking. Dad goes to Al-Anon family groups. I didn't think Al-Anon would work for me, but every time I go, I feel better. If someone's drinking bothers you, you might find help in an Al-Anon family group meeting right here in our community. I found support there. You can too. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or visit alanonfamilygroups.org. Please help. 
help feed these precious orphans. Show them that someone cares. Donate now at foodfororphans.org. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. Welcome back to Artscape. I'm Susan Sablon Harrington, your host. And we have so enjoyed the first two segments of this show with Fred Watkins, our photographer extraordinaire. Fred, you've met incredible people and you've gone all over the world. You've seen history in the making and you've been part of history. One of the things that takes me by surprise and it is just awe-inspiring is your opportunity to photograph a very, very, very important man. Tell yes. me about this. That was in um, 